Be careful with the vinyl wrap on the fenders. Well, it's all about distance. Don't squeeze the trigger, but if no, I were right no. here, that would hurt. Like, if I was out here, it would be fine. If I were out here, I wouldn't even be getting uh, my hand clean. So yeah, that's for like helpful. a pistol? It is actually for a gun, yeah. So I've watched the videos you do before you even put that flashlight on. Yeah. And then after you put it on, it makes a huge difference. There's literally never enough light. This thing is still hot. It's been here for like two hours. <laughs> I think if this thing cools off overnight, it'll be in a much better place to be washed. And it's late anyway, so I'm going to start on this thing early in the morning and check back in then. Come on, check it out. <laughs> yeah, this one's gonna be a lot of fun. Don't look at my microphone like that. You gonna help me out with this one or what? If I give you a wash mitt, will you wash this thing for me? All right, it's the next morning and I'm ready to get this thing done. What do you think? We got this? I wanna start with this wheel. This one is gonna help, she's gonna grab a mitt. Gonna get on this. I wanna see what my M shine and heavy duty will do for all that junk in there. Then I'm gonna do a touchless wash on this whole thing, save a little time. It's not super dirty, but it's, it's dirty enough to see what we did. And I'm curious how well this will come out because black is a tough color. I'm not gonna get into the interior of this one. Jeff takes really, really good care of this. Honestly, if I were to get inside here and clean it, it would get dirtier. We'll just leave this alone. We'll just work on the outside. All of the soaps that I ever created since I was a teenager have been with the goal of taking care of this particular fleet. I saw the owner of this fleet, Jerry Bodwin, drive by in what was called Triple Nine. That was his fanciest, nicest Peterbilt, all orange with a super highly mirror polished dump trailer. And I was blown away. I was like, what the heck kind of soap does this guy use? Now I have the soaps and we're gonna just do a really good job no matter how long it takes to get this thing Perfect for Jerry. I'm gonna use my heavy degreaser in here, get the greases all taken care of, the touchless wash. We'll see how much of the bugs we get off of there. I think the bugs are gonna come off pretty decent. I mean, I usually get in real close with the pressure washer once the two steps are on there, uh, the stars and the stripes washes, and that does a pretty good job, but it probably won't get it 100%. That's where I'm gonna bust out my scissor lift. I'm gonna get up on top of these stacks. I'm gonna do the roof today, so that's gonna be perfect. We're gonna get it all nice, and then we're gonna do some other stuff too. This is mirror polished. It's got that oxidation on there. And so I'm gonna use my foaming pump sprayer to put some M shine on there real nice and strong. Let's fill this thing up. The stuff right here, we're gonna use this on all the polished aluminum. This is water. So this is four liters of water right here. And I'm just gonna fill up to the five liter mark with some M shine here. So that's what we would call a four to one ratio. Isn't that right, Kona? You'll notice that I'm only halfway full in this container right here, and that's perfect because if you were to fill this to the brim with this, the fluid, then there would be no room for the air. So you want to have a half and half mix, and that'll give you the maximum run time which is what you want. So what's nice about these is they do have the Schrader valve on them, so I can pressurize this with my air compressor. That is huge. These are necessary. Get yourself some Prevo air couplings. They're really nice. I got this for, this This one fitting was like 20 something bucks on Amazon. Check this out. Boom, easy. There's a relief valve on this thing that'll pop when it's totally full. We're at about 40 pounds pressure right now. Oh, there we go. So that's 55 pounds pressure when it pops. So this will handle the polished aluminum stuff. And then for the degreasing and the tires, like cleaning out the rubber real good, we're gonna use heavy duty. This stuff is a real good tool for that. And this is the IK Alk 9. You don't have to use these pump sprayers. You know, some people are like, oh, look what he said. This is the only one you can use. You can use any pump sprayer. I just bought some HDX sprayers from Home Depot. I think they're like 15 bucks for a two gallon size. And I've seen those last a good amount of time. These are just nice pump sprayers. They're really durable. The other one I was just filling, the 
IK uh, Foam Pro 2 is rated for low pH products like wheel cleaners or like my aluminum cleaner. The seals last a really long time. This one's rated for high pH products like degreasers. Basically, all that I'm saying is this is the same pump sprayer that I've had for the last year and a half in the studio. <laughs> you know, I'm not buying stuff over and over again as they fail. So I'm gonna do the same thing in here. The ratios thing, <clears throat> it's, uh, I tell people all the time, like as far as how strong you're mixing stuff, you just wanna stretch the soap as far as you can while being happy with what, what it's doing for you. So four to one for what I'm doing is, is I don't know, I just decided I wanted a little extra pep. Sometimes I'll do 50-50 if it seems real hopeless. Sometimes I'll do 10 to one, uh, mostly water, you know, 10 parts water, one part soap if it looks like really light work. Every situation is different. You just have to kind of play, play by ear a little bit every time and see what works for you. There's also a certain amount of your own preference, you know, like how clean is clean enough, you know, like what do you expect? <laughs> so I have no idea. But I'm gonna do four to one on this one today because it's dirty, but it's not horrifying, you know? And I'm, I'm kind of eyeballing stuff too because I can always spike this a little stronger or add a little more water. Probably things will work out just fine. This sprayer here, unfortunately, does not have the Schrader valve. I don't know why they don't do it. I'm gonna do this the old-fashioned way on this one. So yeah, these are the same two pump sprayers I've been using since the day I first started filming in this room. Last January, right around there. So these have been very reliable for me. And, and granted, they're only getting light use. I'm not like a full-time truck wash or anything. They've held up well, and I don't even rinse these out. Like, I don't, I don't empty them out and flush them with water or anything. I just leave the soaps in there. They sit in there for some time. This one's nice because it foams. The foam is good for cling time and it, I, it's kind of satisfying to use, but it's unnecessary. M-Shine can go on in any form. It, you can put it on with a bucket and brush if you want it to. The thing I don't like about these is these dumb wand clips clasp things. They universally fail. It's so annoying. So IK, if you're listening, please make us an alkaline rated version of one of these so that we can enjoy life and have foaming degreasers. Maybe I could just do it. I don't know. I could see how long it lasts with alkaline in there. I mean, this has been a good sprayer, but I really like the holster that they have for this one better. It's, it's much more awesome. This is just a much more substantial piece. All right, let's get a couple things I'll need. I'm just gonna need a wheel brush, a mitt. If I were smart, I'd sell gloves. Heavy duty and M-Shine are probably, uh, actually definitely less harsh than a lot of things you could get at a standard auto parts store. However, it's always a good idea to wear gloves. And for Kona here, like I might bring her around and, and have her wait over in my uh, studio on the other side of the wall here. I don't know how her paws would feel. She might get like a rash or irritation or something if she was standing in the stuff when I use it this strong. So we'll put her over on the other side over there and have her wait while I do some of the heavier cleaning here. Just to keep her safe until I can get her little doggy uh, gloves. <laughs> You recognize these from like some of the, the um, like I put this in my drill and spin it in cup holders. This is what I use to put way too much liquid on switches. But these are really nice brushes. These guys just came out with this, a tire scrub brush. I have a feeling it's gonna be a very high-end experience. I got this nice sort of textured thing going on. Makes me wish I wasn't wearing gloves. Nice and stiff, should do a lot of nice work. Tiny though, it's so small. It's like a really big toothbrush. But uh, let's play with it and see how it goes. First thing I'm gonna do is hit this with a little bit of pressure, you know, no reason to scrape around all that heavy junk in this nice rim. <laughs> I mean, heck, maybe that's clean enough. But let's take it all the way, you know? Let's see what we can do. First up, we'll put on the M-Shine. Yeah, man, way too much. M-Shine's a real nice cleaner. It cleans polished aluminum up without etching it or turning it white or anything like that. Gets oxidation out of there. Brake dust has no chance against this stuff. Now we'll throw some of the heavy duty on the rubber and onto this hub in the middle here. This stuff gets all the junk out of the rubber. And some people say that this is destroying the tire, like this is releasing the, the oil out of there. I certainly hope that's not the case because I wouldn't want that for my favorite fleet here. One thing that I can say is that once once I clean the tire and rinse this off, if I put this on again, 
it does not turn brown. That leads me to think that it's not destroying the tire, but more removing the dirt from the rubber on the surface. And quite a bit of it. All right, a moment of truth. Let's see how this thing works. I feel like I'm mowing a lawn with a pair of scissors. This might be better for like cars, you know? It's a stiff bristle. Like I like the, the coarseness of it. My normal wheel brushes would probably be more appropriate than, than this, I don't know. I mean, I sell these too, so you know, it's not like I'm biased one way or the other from a financial perspective. This might be more for like little uh, detail areas and spots that you can't get a full size wheel brush into. We'll keep using this and find a good use for this. We'll find it. I wonder if there's any point around in here. I mean, maybe. This actually works pretty good. Just to agitate things before you hit it with the power washer. I feel like this material isn't gonna scratch or damage anything that this thing's made out of, so that's kinda cool. I'm surprised how much junk still came off there after power washing it, honestly. Oh, it looks all right. Someone told me a while back that I shouldn't blow dry the tires because it's bad for them. I mean, do you drive on your tires, bro? The heck? I think this looks fine. I can't imagine why it would be bad to blow air at a tire. The rubber looks real good and, and dark. You know, that's clean. Aluminum's cleaned up. I mean, it could use a polish. It's better off than it was, and if you're gonna polish it, it would be easier now. Hub's looking good. I think that brush got in here on this hub real nice. I'm feeling it, this is good. I mean, we're gonna get this all wet all over again when we do the touchless wash later, but I just wanted to see what we could do with M-Shine, heavy duty, because this was the worst wheel by far. Heck, there might even be a little leak coming out of here. So this will probably be a waste of time. Probably be better to fix that first, but now they can fix it while it's clean. Take a good look. Look at that thing, better. Not perfect, it's not perfect. You can still see some stuff in the corners, you know. Still reflective. M-Shine does not remove the polish at all. It just cleans real nice. And that rubber, man, whoa. That's ready for some tire shine now. What's cool is, you know, this wheel over here was not as dirty, and you can see the difference. You know, that's kind of where we started from. And this, this wheel actually, same thing, got that brown tinge to it. What we'll do is, I'm gonna leave this wheel alone. I'm gonna wash this whole thing with my touchless wash in just a little bit, but this one, I'm gonna just use the touchless wash on, and we'll see if this one looks as good as the back one. It probably won't, but it'll at least show the difference in the, the whole reason to use M-Shine and heavy duty. You know, we'll see how the rubber looks and all that. Stars and Stripes will do a good amount of work to clean them up. It probably won't be as presentable as this back one. So now let's let's get in here and, and see what we can do with this oxidation. I'm gonna do just up to a certain point with M Shine and then stop and then we'll rinse the same on, on both areas and see what M Shine does here. All right, M Shine four to one. Just to right there. And let's see what we can do. This is not a polish. It will not polish unpolished aluminum. It will only get the junk off of the surface of aluminum that has been polished in its past. And it won't etch the aluminum or turn it white or anything like that. You just wanna make sure that the aluminum isn't hot. If it's a thin aluminum, especially like a fuel tank, because you'll see some streaks and that's not what you want. Let's rinse that off, see what we got. Right, let's see what we got. That's just the pressure washer. You still got that black stuff in there, the oxidation on the surface. And then as you move over to the M-Shine side, a lot of that came off. I can probably get a little more of that if I went over it again or gave it maybe a little a little more time. You just don't want to let it dry before you rinse it because it'll it'll potentially streak the aluminum if it dries. So you don't want that, but yeah, pretty nice. I mean, you know, but like I say, it, it needs to be something nice underneath the junk to be able to get it to look like it should, you know, but nice shortcut. Cause you know, there's a lot of surface area here and it just, uh, it helps prolong how, how nice the aluminum is for longer versus not using it at all. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. So I'm going to do the rest of this now. This is a much rougher aluminum. Uh, it'll still clean that up too. And in some instances like this, that's where you might say 50, 50 would do more to help. Will it get it back to reflective? I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. I doubt that it will though. At a certain point, the aluminum just, it, it becomes rough and that diffuses light. So it doesn't show that reflection anymore. More. That's where the limitation is, you know, you, that's at a certain point you have to physically smooth the surface out with a cutting wheel. Let's see what this four to one mix of M-Shine will do right here. This is real rough aluminum. So it doesn't look like much yet. All right, 
right, so here we have the frame rail on this side, untreated but with pressure, and then M shine on this side. Some funny things about the aluminum already, and I guess I didn't pick a very good spot. But you can see the difference here. So that's the difference between just pressure and M shine at four to one. Now, if we were to mix that a little stronger, maybe 50 50, and brush it, oh my god, it would look so good. Maybe we should try that real quick just to see. I've got three quarts in here. Yeah, three quarts is like three quarters of a gallon. And I've got like three quarters of a gallon left of the M-Shine here from the pump sprayer. And that's gonna probably get me through this whole truck and the pump sprayer, so I'll just use the rest of this in here. The three quarts roughly of this with the three quarts roughly of water here means one to one or 50-50. So this will go on like more than twice as strong as the pump sprayer is putting it on. So we'll see what we get done. So we got the little the little detail factory guy next to the normal wheel brush from Easy Reach. You know, this is for like smaller work than this. And even this is a little small for this. Really, I should be using something bigger than this. But I wanted to use this in the rest of the tires, you know, just to get them all even looking. Now, I do sell both of these, so I'm completely non-biased. I do think the fit and finish of this is quite a bit better than the Easy Reach, though. This is a real nice little thing. And I like the idea of like being able to work small, tight areas I could see this being useful, getting grease off of stuff around lug nuts and places that are impossible to work something this big. So this this will be handy. I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to using this more. Let me get a slightly bigger brush, though, than both of these for this. Now this, this is a tank brush. I, li I like this because it's got multiple points of entry here, which I think might be useful. I also sell this, so we're still non-biased here. And uh, the poles as well. This is like a, I think this is probably a five-foot pole, maybe a six-foot pole, I don't know. Oh, that's a six-foot pole. I think these tank brushes are kind of neat because there's no way to touch anything really um, by accident and damage stuff. Now, I know brush is generally a bad word, but man, in this instance, I think it's perfectly fine to use a brush under here. Yeah, these tank brushes are kind of cool. So now we're going on 50-50. You know, this might be a more efficient way to use them shine it away. The pump sprayer is just kind of an extra thing, you know. A bucket and a brush can go a very long way. And you know, the physical contact, especially in a situation like this, I mean, you're gonna go a little further when you put a little application on. And one thing I like about using uh, using M Shine this way is you're continuously working the formula, so it's not really going to dry. You do want to be careful not to let this dry on nicely polished aluminum, though, especially on horse trailers. I don't know why, but horse trailers, I think, because the aluminum is so thin that it can be thoroughly hot very easily in the sun. And a lot of people with horse trailers get streaks when they use this stuff. I don't really fully understand why, but it's the way it is. Let's rinse this off and see what we got. We got it a little better. I mean, it makes sense, right? 50-50 is quite a bit stronger. You got physical contact in the mix there. Now you could do this with an aluminum brightener and that's an etching acid, right? That, that would be very efficient at doing work like this, but you would run the risk of streaking any aluminum that's nice that it came into contact with, so. I used to make aluminum brighteners and it was um, a hydrofluoric acid based aluminum brightener. Very aggressive stuff. And once I became known for working on nicer things like this, some people were using that product on nice, highly polished trailers and tanks and things like thinking, oh yeah, this is good for the aluminum because it's Chemex. So I discontinued that product pretty quick. M Shine is designed for polished aluminum, but it will work on unpolished aluminum just like this. Underside's looking pretty good. Uh, not this portion of the underside, mind you. This portion of the underside. I did go over this twice, and it's hard to see, but there's just a little bit more junk on that than on the section that I went over twice. So going over it multiple times did seem to help. I mean, it makes sense, right? Well, with the underneath all tuned up, I'm gonna get on to touchless washing the exterior of all of this, and then after this trailer is done, then I'll move on to the truck itself up here and get this nice Peterbilt all done. I am gonna hit the engine first. I'm gonna degrease this, get it all nice, get the top of the hood while it's re easily reached and aimed at, because uh, Jeff's gonna be looking right over this hood as he goes down the road, so we want, we want that to look good. Then I'll close this, and then we'll get onto the bugs underneath on the grill. It's gonna be nice. But yeah, I like to clean up all this really messy stuff first so that any of the junk that sprays around, you know, I'll get that last when I do the nice touchless exterior wash. <laughs> 
I just wanted to convert this over. I had some snake oil in this one. I cut a hole into my foam cannons right here to put a grommet. The reason for that is so that I don't have to take the bottle off when I go to foam. It's a nice way to streamline the process. Just like these, these are five gallon jugs. I take four gallons of water into these and then I top them off with one of my gallons of the super concentrate and that makes a four to one ratio that I can just top off the cannons with so I'm not measuring them in between every refill. Because when you're doing big projects, you're gonna refill these a couple times. The key to getting a good touchless wash is, is trial and error. <laughs> you kind of have to play with it until, until it's right for you because there's certain aspects like water hardness. That's a big one. The harder your water, the less any soap will work. So this valve here is called the Mezzo Valve by MTM Hydro. They're super nice to come up with this for us because this is a really nice shortcut for using two foam cannons at the same time. This is the same one that I first got a, a year and a half ago, or two years ago now actually, because it was before I started using this studio. I've been using the same Mezzo Valve the whole time, so it's held up really well for me. Very happy with it. This is called a Shuttle Valve here, and this is probably where it would fail if anywhere. As a matter of fact, I always know that this is the one because the original one that I first opened up had this tear in the button here, and I was like, oh boy, how long is this gonna last, you know? Here we are, two years later. <laughs> they come normally with a normal QC connect, like the inlets of these. I switched it out for a Q plug so that it goes on to my Q quick connects on my lances on the in my wash bay here. This is a much nicer quick connect, much beefier. This is a Q connect here, so real nice. The reason I like these more is because there's zero flex when you're when you're working with it, it spins really easily, and they're very durable. They don't, the O-rings don't really tend to die. These are another thing that I've never had to replace in my wash bin. stars on the first fill up. The first refill did the front of the trailer, back of the trailer, and the side of the trailer. So next fill up would probably only use maybe half of, half of the fill up to do this, just the side of the other side. You'll notice some rinsing from the bottom to the top. I might not know what I'm doing, but it does generate comments, and that's good for views. And then I'll tell you what else. It helps me see where I was with the, the high pressure rinse. Because if you rinse top down, uh, you know, the soaps loosen up the road film. That stuff that you can wipe off with your finger afterwards and you're like, oh, it's not really clean. The soaps will loosen that up, but it's the high pressure that gets it off of there. So I rinse bottom up so that I can see with the foam as a marker where I am. I lose track of that pretty quick. Everything looks good wet. You wouldn't know you missed a spot with the pressure until it was dry. Rinse the polished aluminum stuff off first, just so that there's no chance of this stuff drying on it. Oh. 
just finished a many hour meeting with my accountant and uh, I'm back, but it is now nine o'clock at night, but I'm not done. It's clean now, but now I need to take it the extra. I'm gonna snake oil this trailer and then I'm going to tune up the stacks with some awesome sauce, hit the roof. You'll notice up here, these stacks don't look very good. They're kinda, eh, they could be better. I'm gonna make them better. But I'm pretty happy with how this came out in general. Very, very presentable for a touch-free wash on a black vehicle. I'm pretty good with this. We got the bug. I feel pretty much like we nailed it. There's still like a, a, a tinge of bugs. You'll see a couple of them on the visor. So that's where the awesome sauce comes into play because I'll be able to tune up the chrome, get any of the little touch up stuff done. I wanna do that while it's dry because it'll be easier to see what needs to be to be hit. And then I'll hit the whole thing with snake oil. And then once that dries overnight, then I'll come in early tomorrow morning because they're gonna pick this up at about 5 a.m. So I'll come in a little before that, get some tire shine on the, all the rubber, make it all look that extra. This is the, the wheel that got the, the full treatment, right? This it's got the M shine, the heavy duty, and then the touchless wash. This was the worst wheel, right? Rubber looks good. And then this wheel over here, just the touchless wash here. So you can see the difference in the aluminum. There's still that oxidation on there. That's the stuff that M shine gets out. Keep in mind too, that this, this wheel was not as bad as this wheel. So this, this looks pretty fresh. Rubber does not look bad, but the aluminum needs more. I'm gonna touch this up with some M shine still, just, but I just wanted to see what the difference would be, you know? This is that four to one mix that I was using earlier. Oh yeah. Oxidation removed. And that'll get a little more shiny as the water evaporates. I don't know why it is, but when it's still wet, it looks a little bit hazy. I don't know why, but it'll look good driving. I'm gonna get my scissor lift out to get the awesome sauce on a couple spots. One of them was right here. I noticed that that could be a little better. I think that since the pressure is such a big part of the cleaning process with Stars and Stripes, when you start getting up out of the range of the, the lance and you're, you're too far away, you start to see more stuff getting left behind. Awesome sauce. That should be handy. I'm gonna use a mitt stick to do the roof. Oh, check this out. This is where I didn't rinse good enough. See all that? Even though I rinsed from bottom to top, I, I didn't rinse good enough. If I rinse from top to bottom though, you can guarantee you'd have a whole lot of this going on where you rinsed good in one spot and not in another. I don't know how I missed all that. That was a big that was a big miss. That's why it's so important to rinse thoroughly in a touchless wash. It'll look great wet, but that will be very short-lived. So I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna spray awesome sauce on this thing, and then I'm gonna use that to reach over the roof so that I can reach it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that gets it. This stuff smells amazing. This is, this is an SiO2 spray, which just means it'll, it'll make it slippery for a long time, preferably a couple months. Snake oil does the same thing a lot easier, but snake oil would not, it would not be the thing that I could use to get this stuff looking proper. You know what I mean? It's a great way if you notice once everything's dry, like, oh, look at that spot. Like, I'm not happy with that. You can come back with this and be like, here you go, boom. Boom, here you are. Fresh. This is what I mean when I say, you know, a touchless wash can only get you so far, it's not gonna get you 100%. Even this is not getting it 100%. I mean, it's still not perfect, perfect, but at least it's not bothering me from the ground level, you know? There's really no end. 
Look at that, man. The roof. If I had a dollar for every time everybody asked me about the roof, man. My plan is pretty, pretty straightforward. Like, I'm just gonna soak this thing, and then I'm just gonna do this. I should lube it up and prevent any scratching or anything like that. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, it feels kind of hacky. It feels like I don't really want to show this to the internet. I mean, obviously, the better way to do it would be to foam the top of it in the middle of the wash. I'm one man, what do you want? I mean, I think this actually, this is not the worst technique possible, I don't know. Did it work? I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's some built-in haziness to this paint. <laughs> it might be too, I don't know. Maybe it might be uh, a limitation of, um, you know, maybe there's some UV aspect to this like tinge. Maybe it just needs like a full-on buffer to get, you know, all the way there, you know? Looks kind of like crap. <laughs> I wonder if I can do it like, <laughs> oh boy, we're inventing new techniques tonight. Hey, if you guys have a better way, I would love to hear about it. This is horrible. I should be just spraying stars and stripes up here and doing this the easy way. I have no idea why I'm, I'm making this so much harder on myself. And you can see like the stacks not looking as good as I want. Same dealio. This is looking like it's working. Something about doing this roof is making me grateful that I don't charge money because I would be embarrassed if I did. I would not be proud. I mean, maybe it's worth money. I don't know. It's starting to look pretty good, actually. I think that roof was just depressing. I mean, the roof is depressing, but the uh, rest of it's cleaning up pretty good. Let's just hope my scissor lift doesn't bump into anything. Uh, I and mean, I've got insurance, but I don't want to use it. Would I do it if I were charging money? No, I would only do this for free. Kind of backwards too that I'll be going over this with snake oil next because this is one of those more final steps. I just wanted to use it to get some physical contact on this roof because I figured it would need it. And boy, that was uh, definitely the case. All right, so snake oil it is, man. I've already got Mostly water in here, about, about the same. I mix it as M Shine, Stars and Stripes, and all that stuff. It's all simple. Four to one's a great starting point. Here's the trick. So I don't feel like refilling a bunch. This could cut 10 to one into the foam cannon if you were gonna tighten this knob all the way down. But if you run this knob halfway unscrewed, it'll draw at half the speed roughly. So you just double up the strength of what's in here and you can refill it half as often. And it is late, man. I don't wanna be messing around. So I have these little adapters that go from QC to Q, and then we're rocking and rolling. Man. All right, let's get this thing coated. That's all I can bring myself to do tonight. That's about it. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna be heading home soon. I'll come back in the morning, finish up touching up these tires with some tire shine, and then we'll be good to go. We'll get this thing pulling out. I'm hoping. This will make quick work out of these last spots and we'll be done 100%. And it's not super quick, but it's <laughs> elbow grease still to get these these smeary pieces out. Bumpers are just surprisingly big when you really, when you're doing when you're scrubbing every little bug. It's working though. I mean, I gave it the touchless on the front here. I probably could have agitated it and gotten them. Well, we got it close, and at least it's not a gross process. You know, we got a lot of the heavy stuff out, but it's not bad. Do you want to try it out? It smells fantastic, yeah. It's, just, it's like a never ending thing. You can never achieve full happiness. Mm -hmm. Oh, heck yeah. Wow. Dang, man. This thing came out. It did fantastic. Yeah, this thing came out mint, man. Wow. Not bad. The stacks were good. 
Awesome sauce, man. Good tune up. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you.